Welcome to Horror Study Hall, the academic side of horror. I'm your host, M.A. Reynolds. It's time to get spooky. Welcome to episode five of Horror Study Hall, the resource guide. Apologies for my voice for this episode. I am fighting off a cold. So if my voice cracks or it sounds a little funny and nasally, that is why. Um, this episode will probably be a little shorter than our, our other episodes. Um, I decided that it would be nice if I shared some resources in case you wanted to get into horror studies yourself. Um, how I found some resources, and just some of my personal favorites that we'll probably dive into in future episodes. So now that we have talked about a few topics under the Horror Studies umbrella, um, I thought we'd dive into some of the background information for your own self-studies. So where do you start, Um, right? That's really the hardest question that I had when I first got into this, Um, just because it's not really a subject that is as popular as others. Um, Horror studies are fascinating, Um, but you don't really hear a lot of people talking about them. Um, You don't hear about the psychological and scientific studies that are going on based on the horror genre or fear in general. Um, You mostly hear about more widely accepted topics, you know, like um, how children grow and develop or um, the psychological impacts of video games, which could be adjacent to horror studies, depending on what video game you're talking about. Um, this sub- subject can be a little overwhelming to start diving into. Um, I personally found it to be a little overwhelming at first just because I had no idea where to start. And that's one of the driving factors behind me wanting to make this podcast is to be there for other people like me who don't know where to start. Um, so let's let's start diving a little deeper into where to start and what resources are available. Um, so for me personally, when I decided that I wanted to get into this particular subject area of research um, and just general interest, I wanted to answer my own question that I had about myself. Why do I like horror so much? Why do I find comfort in horror? Um, Why is it that when I have a bad day or I'm feeling really stressed out, I want to watch a really violent horror movie and for some reason that calms me down and makes me feel better. It makes me put all of my negative energy into that movie rather than into the world. It just seemed kind of odd to me that I was so into the genre. I know part of it is just my upbringing, right? Anyone that knows me personally knows I did not have the best upbringing. Definitely grew up in the 80s when we were all latchkey children. Uh, My parents did not watch us. Um, My brothers practically raised me. Um, And having teenage brothers in the 80s when I was a small child meant I was exposed to a lot of things I probably shouldn't have been exposed to. Um, And on the other side of that coin, my parents weren't the best at keeping me away from things that shouldn't be for children. Um, They used to check me out of school in elementary school to go see horror movies because it was cheaper to go to a matinee. So I saw Hellraiser in the theaters when I was seven. Um, I saw Fright Night in the theaters. I think that came out in 1984, so I would have been four. Just a lot of movies I should not have been exposed to. I was, and um, they became a source of comfort for me. Um, Probably because my upbringing wasn't the best, that this was the one thing that brought me comfort And so as I decided to dive deep into this subject and to learn more about the psychology behind it and the impact, I wondered if there were any books, websites, 
documentaries, other resources available to me that would help me understand the why behind me enjoying the genre so much. Um, So a great place to start for anyone and where I started, of course, is podcasts. Um, I talked about this in my first episode that I started listening to the Faculty of Horror and they really introduced me into horror studies and made me want to research more. So take a look at the resource pages on, on any podcast that you may listen to that's related to horror and just see what they use to make their episodes. Um, like I've mentioned previously, that led me to Men, Women, and Chainsaws by Carol Clover, which was the first horror studies book I read, which I feel that everyone who is interested in horror studies should read. It is the foundation for a lot of terms in the horror genre and horror studies in general. Um, it's where the term final girl came from, if you weren't aware. But other resources will be available to you if you look there. You'll see a lot of books that may have been referenced Uh, maybe some other podcasts or YouTube videos. Um, Just take a look at the research page on Horror Study Hall to see all of the resources I use for every single episode if you want to learn more, um, because I'm just giving you a surface level of these topics when I'm talking to you on the podcast. It can be a bit overwhelming to decide where to start. So another place that most of us start is just doing a Google search, right? Seeing what's available out there on the internet searching for terms like horror studies or horror psychology or foundation of horror will lead you to some interesting results. So I, um, for the in preparation of this episode, um, googled horror studies just to see what came up. Um, I believe I did that back in the beginning and it led me to save a whole bunch of bookmarks that I'm so willing to share if anyone emails us at amateurhorror101 at gmail.com. Googling that term brought up the Miskatonic Institute of Horror Studies. This is one that I participate in quite quite often. So um, the Miskatonic Institute of Horror Studies was founded in 2010 by Care La Janice. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. She is the author of House of Psychotic Women. I highly recommend that book. It is an amazing book. Miskatonic Institute well, does semesters to have lectures on the horror studies genre. They have guest speakers from all over the community, from academic researchers to filmmakers to probably people like me who are just amateurs in this particular area, but have also um, done a lot of research and have a deep love for the horror genre. Um, before the pandemic happened, the Miskatonic Institute only did courses in person. Yeah, there were three branches. There's one in Los Angeles, one in New York, and one in London. Um, I remember emailing them pre-pandemic asking if they would ever consider to do online because I am located in Utah, which is miles away from any of these (laughs) branches and from the horror studies community in general. Um, and and aw- awesomely, Kier actually emailed me back herself, which I did not expect. Um, that actually made me really happy. Um, she was very kind and said that they were thinking about it, but they hadn't had it in their cards yet. Um, COVID kind of forced the Miskatonic Institute to go into online courses. Um, I was extremely happy about that. And I was purchasing access to all of their lectures for all of their branches every year. Um, I learned so much about horror studies from Miskatonic University, or Miskatonic Institute, excuse me. Miskatonic University is H.P. Lovecraft's (laughs) fake university that this institute took their name from. They have extremely interesting classes. I highly recommend you check out their website. I say highly recommend too much, but here we are. Um, (laughs) I recommend you take out Um, You take any of their courses if you're available to do so. At this time, they've gone back to both in-person and online, which is perfect for someone like me who can only access the courses through their Zoom webinars. You can purchase a pass for their semester of courses, um, either online or in person. Um, I hope someday to be able to travel to either any of these branches, honestly, into a, a attend one of their lectures in person. 
check out their website for more information. You can find a link in the show notes. Um, A resource that I've recently stumbled across, um, I found it on Twitter of all places, is Horlex. Um, Launched in 2021, Horlex is a searchable database of academic and other writings about horror and horror-adjacent cinema. It's this great database where you can search for articles or books on any subject you may be interested in in the horror studies space. This database has thousands upon thousands of searchable resources to help anyone interested in horror studies find resources. I I wish this website existed back when I first became interested in horror studies. It would have helped me immensely to get started um, to understand what kind of topics I was interested in in horror studies because as you have seen and will see even more examples of horror studies is a very broad umbrella and you can learn so much about so many things just by studying it. Out at the University of Pittsburgh, there is a horror studies center. Um, This horror studies center hosts lectures, publishes articles, and works closely with the horror studies working group to study horror and promote the enjoyment of horror. I stumbled across this one through just a random Google search when I was trying to find more information on zombie movies and what zombie movies represent. And they have amazing articles, online seminars or lectures that you can attend and sign up for, the majority of which are free of charge, which is super awesome. You may even travel to the University of Pittsburgh to take a look at the George A. Romero archival collection. This collection is consisted of arguably one of the largest archives of original materials from scripts to to props to other original items from the production of horror film. Um, This amazing archive and horror studies center works in partnership with the George A. Romero Foundation to keep George's legacy alive and to promote the study of horror. More information can be found on the George A. Romero Foundation's website as well as the University of Pittsburgh's website and the Horror Studies Center's website. Please check that out and donate if you want to contribute to keeping these important centers open. Something that most people may not know is that academic and psychological studies into the horror genre and fear in general are continuously being conducted from scientists from all over the world. Um, These studies are conducted in universities, in private labs, um, and their papers are published for the world to see. This is one area that I personally find extremely fascinating. The psychological, sociological, and philosophy behind horror and the academics who choose to make this their life's work. Searching for articles on websites like JSTOR and ResearchGate can yield countless results. Who knew that these websites would come in handy after college? Um, I personally utilize JSTOR quite a bit. Um, You can read up to 100 articles on their website for free each month. Um, If you want to print them or download them, then you have to have a purchase membership. Um, ResearchGate also has some fascinating articles on horror studies and psychological impact of horror that are really interesting to read. Using JSTOR and ResearchGate, I actually found a couple of other interesting research labs that had submitted articles to the scientific community. Um, Those labs are the Kronos Laboratory and the Recreational Fear Lab. Kronos Laboratory studies the interactions between people and media content. While a large portion of their research is based around video games, they also focus on other sources of media They test how social context influences our emotions and how media can influence our emotions and how we experience the world around us. Their website has countless articles on their research that you can read and and understand how maybe horror video games impact the mind and how horror impacts the mind. The Recreational Fear Lab is one of my personal favorites. I'm going to feature them in depth in a future episode and what they do exactly at their lab. Um, Please check out their website and see the amazing work that they're doing. So the Recreational Fear Lab is located in Denmark. They focus on frightening leisure activities, 
Like, why do we go to haunted houses? Why do we like to play horror video games? Why do we like horror movies? Um, They've done some online seminars um, that I've attempted to attend. Um, Unfortunately, with the time difference, I was during, it was during my working hours for my day job. So I was only uh, able to attend one session during my lunch hour. And it was just fascinating. I don't want to go into in depth on the recreational fear lab because I do plan on doing um, a, a full episode on them in the very near future. Follow them on Instagram and Twitter and go to their website to get more information on the amazing work these these researchers are doing in the horror genre. There are several YouTube channels dedicated to horror studies. In Praise of Shadows um, has a lot of in-depth analysis of horror movies and even horror art. One of their more recent episodes focused on an artist whose work is pretty frightening when you look at it it's really interesting Um, that was actually the one that got me introduced to their their channel collative learning takes a look at horror from a psychology perspective robert eggers the horse also has an alternative youtube channel where he does even more videos Um, you can also purchase really in-depth longer analysis of your favorite horror films from his personal website after dark analysis Um, is not really active anymore, but I really enjoy their videos. They had a really great video on color theory and horror film and how color can be used to elicit emotions from an audience. Really, really good content on that channel. Um, Many other film studies channels have videos on various horror study study topics or um, analysis of horror film. Ryan Hollinger is one of my personal favorites who does some analysis on horror film. Um, Screened is another really great one. They don't only focus on the horror genre, but they have quite a few amazing videos on horror movies and analyzing them. Um, I also have just curated my own personal YouTube playlist of horror studies from documentaries that I have found on, on YouTube to short videos that are on other film studies channels that I can, I can just watch at any time and kind of bone up on some of my horror studies information. There are also quite a few documentaries that have been produced on horror studies and just horror film in general. Um, One that's coming out that I will do an episode on once I've seen it is Mental Health and Horror and how horror can positively impact our mental health. Um, I'm really excited for this one to be released, so stay tuned and be on the lookout for that one. Um, There's another one called Why Horror? This is about um, an actor and writer who works for Rue Morgue magazine, Tal Zimmerman, um, to talk about why we like horror. Kind of answer that question that my horror studies journey began with is why horror? Why do we like horror? Um, Nightmares in Red, White, and Blue talk about the evolution of the American horror film. Everyone needs to see Horror Noir, which is about the representation of blacks in the horror film. There's also a a book that is a companion piece to this documentary. Both are just essential for anyone who is interested in learning more about the horror genre. And then you have, you know, the documentaries around very specific movies like Best Worst Movie about Troll 2, which was filmed here in Utah. Fun fact, the horror um, movies of Friday the 13th are covered in Crystal Lake Memories, the complete history of Friday the 13th. Um, You also have the Never Sleep Again, the Elm Street Legacy documentary talking about the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, which growing up was one of my favorites uh, as a child. Loved it so much. There are countless books written on the subject. Um, I have an Amazon wish list of hundreds of horror studies books that I have found over the years that I want to read, um, as well as the hundreds that I have in my personal home. Um, take a look at any website or any bookstore to see what you can find. Um, it can be kind of hard to find horror studies books in an actual physical bookstore I have found just because it's not really a popular subject. So most of the time I have to go online to find any books that I may want to really read related to horror studies. So how did I find all of these resources? Well, Google is a great resource and really helped me locate a whole bunch of this material that I've been reading and studying over the years. I also pay really close attention to social media. 
paying attention to reposts and who interacts with some of my favorite genre authors and filmmakers has really led me to some really interesting information. I also frequent horror news sites like iHorror, Fangoria, Bloody Disgusting, Rue Morgue, etc. to stay informed on what's going on in the horror space. They sometimes do have articles about horror studies, but sometimes you uh, an article just on a movie that you're really excited about will trigger a thought on something you want to learn more about and help you to be able to find more more information on that particular subject. I sign up for newsletters on any horror website I stumble across. Um, I get so many newsletters from, of course, the the resources I just mentioned with um, Rue Morgue and Fangoria and Bloody Disgusting. Um, But I also stumbled across an article for the site called On Screen. And On Screen is just a film studies website in general, but they do also have a bunch of articles on horror films. So I have found their newsletter to be very helpful every time they have a new edition of their website I get a notification so I can go and see if there's anything that just strikes my fancy also just start interacting on social media with um, like-minded individuals Um, this has led me to be a part of a really interesting discord server with other individuals who are interested in horror and horror studies and literature you can also find really great resources and make new friends Um, If you ever need a suggestion on a book to read, a documentary to watch, or need help with any sort of research, please email me at amateurhorror101 at gmail.com. I am happy to provide my resources and the list of books that I've read or websites I've stumbled across. Um, I've done this on Reddit several times when somebody has posted in the r slash horror subreddit to to ask for horror studies resources. Um, I'm so happy to share the information I have. Once again, thank you for listening to Horror Study Hall. Please follow us on social media at Horror Study Hall on Twitter and Instagram. Rate and review us wherever you listen to our podcast. You can also find us on YouTube at Horror Study Hall's YouTube channel. And stay spooky, friends.